ओके वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू चैप्टर नंबर फाइव नेटवर्क लेयर द कंट्रोल प्लेन सो इन लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अटोनोमस सिस्टम्स एंड देन वी हैल्सो डिस्कस हाउ वट हाउ इन अटोनोमस सिस्टम रोटिंग प्रोटोकॉल वर्क्स एंड हाउ द रोटिंग इज परफॉर्म्ड uh among the autonomous systems in today's class we are going to discuss uh, the hdn control plane okay so as we know that uh we have two types of network architecture one is called per router control plane and another is called software defined networking okay currently the internet it is using the per router approach per router control plane that is control plane is present in each and every router and this means that the current architecture is distributed in nature why distributed in nature because each router has control plane so historically it has been implemented by distributed why distributed means that in each router there is a control plane so this is called per router approach or per router control plane okay so in this approach in the per router approach the router it contains switching hardware Okay, and all the programs, all the programs, all the programs they are implemented in the router using hardware. They are implemented in hardware. Okay, and all the programs they are implemented monolithic. What does it mean? That all the programs they are implemented and in the hardware. so you can't change these programs you can only do configuration you can configure them but you cannot do modification in its implementation and it is implemented in hardware because it is fast okay so this in the traditional in the per router architecture the control plane and data plane both are implemented in the router in hardware not in software in hardware form so if you want to change the working of a protocol you have to implement it again in a new hardware in a new router and then you have to play replace the old router with the new router so that's why it is difficult it is monolithic implemented second it is proprietary router operating system what does it mean that the cisco organization cisco company the cisco company they implement these routing protocol in their routers by themselves and they are implemented in hardware so you the cisco doesn't allow to change the implementation of these protocol in the cisco routers okay so it is the property right of it is the intellectual property right of the cisco okay so so it is not open source implemented they are not open source implemented so different middle box for different network layer functions for example if we want to use firewall so they have different implementation load balancing net etc so all the things they are implemented in the network layer so they are implemented in the hardware and they are implemented by cisco so it is closed architecture because the implementation the cisco only knows its implementation other people they don't know their implementation and this ip it is implemented by the cisco by following the rfc of ip 
but how I, uh, IP is implemented it doesn't show okay so you uh, one will think that for example if the IP protocol is implemented by Cisco and the IP protocol is implemented by HP in their router so can the HP router communicate with the Cisco router yes they can why because this HP and Cisco they implement the IP by following the RFC of IP so the RFC of IP it is available okay so it is publicly available so their functionality will be same but how it is actually implemented so the Cisco have its own implementation for example it uses the arrays to implement it and the HP uses uh, list or vectors to implement okay so their implementation could be different but functionality will be same functionality is same so that's why the Cisco router it can communicate with the uh, HP router why because the Cisco implements this protocol okay by uh, by following the RFC of this protocol okay so the functionality of this uh, the Cisco router the functionality of IP protocol it's Cisco router and the functionality of IP protocol in HP router it will be same however the implementation is different okay okay so now the people they think about they you know that there were different projects uh, with with the title next generation internet okay our future internet so the different people they have tried so uh, in 2005 round about uh, uh, a new approach has emerged that is going to rethinking of network control play and what is it it is a software defined network so in software defined networks what does it do that in the per router control plane okay it is distributed in nature why because the control plane a routing algorithm it is present in each and every router individual routing algorithm components in each and every router so it is present so this routing protocol it compute the path the forwarding table for this router by interacting with the routing protocol of other control plane okay okay so each router it has control plane okay each router it has control plane routing algorithm okay and this routing algorithm it computes the path for this forwarding table but by interacting with this okay but routing algorithm it is computed by this router okay so th this is the per router control plane okay so you can see that in each router we have control plane and data plane okay so what are the limitation of per router architecture so we have already discussed for example in distance vector routing protocol if the link cost is increased from 4 to 60 then it led to a problem of called poison reverse problem count to infinity okay loop why loop has occurred because if y wants to send data to x so it will send the data to z because the distance of x from y it is 8 okay and the next stop is z so it will forward it to z and the z it has the entry that the x node it is at the distance of 7 from z and the next stop is y so y is forwarding to z and z is forwarding to y okay so we have already discussed it so why this problem arised this problem arise due to distributed nature okay this problem that arised in the per router architecture in the per router control plane why because this router 
it doesn't know that the path that is given from y to x it is because of z okay so we had discussed that this problem of the per route architecture it will be easily solved by the hdl okay similarly let me remind to another limitation of per route architecture that in link state routing protocol we had a problem that was called oscillation it was called oscillation oscillation means then when c sends the c and b and d they were sending the data to a so c b selected the, this one route and d this one okay and the route is selected based on the traffic load that path is will be selected which has the lowest traffic okay so the if the first packet is sent like this way and now when the next packet is sent so all the nodes they will use the same path now this path has higher traffic and this path is free okay so this oscillation problem was discussed and why this oscillation problem arised because the b node doesn't know that the c and d have already also this also decided to use this pro this uh, path okay because the control pen it be decided this path the c control pen also decided this path so the router b control pen doesn't know that the c control pen and d control pen have also decided this path okay so this problem is also addressed in the sgn because in sgn we have centralized control pen that is the centralized controller it is computing the path for b c and d then this problem will not occur this problem will not arise okay so this this is the another limitation and further as we have discussed that the routers that per in per router architecture or per router control plane the control plane in the routers and the data plane they are implemented in hardware so it means the user cannot do modification it can only do configuration for example if kamsets university have bought a cisco router model 1 suppose model 1 and later on it was detected that in the in the cisco router model 1 in the model 1 router of the cisco it has ospf protocol 1 and this has some limitation suppose a new ospf 2 protocol has arrived have been suggested okay so ospf protocol 2 it is not implemented in the cisco model 1 router okay if it is implement if the user wants to use if the kamset university wants to use the uh, ospf 2 button 2 so it has to buy new router it has to buy new router why because ospf2 cannot be implemented in the router in the cisco router model 1 because in the cisco router model 1 it is implemented in hardware okay so that's why it is very uh, it is uh, it is the limitation that if the routers in the per router architecture the the control plane is implemented in hardware so user cannot modify the control plane so if the user wants to uh, to 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 uh, to uh, use or to implement a new control plane a new routing algorithm then, then the user cannot uh, do this in the this modification in the router why because it is implemented in hardware and second so it is closed architecture the, what does it mean that the cisco it implements the ospf routing protocol by following its rfc okay it means that the cisco router ospf functionality it will be same to the ospf functionality of hp router however the cisco implement ospf from using their own coding their own logic and their own uh, for example for example they are using java 
a language and the hpa is using the cisco is using java language and uh, the hp is using c language suppose okay so the functionality will be same however they implement in their own logic okay so if there is an error for example the uh, uh, the, the there is no internet connectivity so the user and the, and the error why this is the error due to implementation so since the coding of the ospf in the cisco router it is not available it is not open it is closed it is not open so we cannot find the user cannot find the concept university cannot find that there is a error in the coding so the logic error cannot be identified okay so this is another limitation third limitation is what a suppose a researcher suppose it in efficient protocol but we cannot implement in the routers why because in the routers these are implemented by the vendor they are closed they are hardware implemented you can the users cannot change and they are closed the user cannot see the coding only the vendor know the coding okay so that's why we cannot test it okay so we have to rely on vendor we have to rely on vendor okay similarly one another important thing that organization used a protocol if it is experimentally tested okay if it is experimentally tested. for example we have ospf 2 protocol a new protocol it is very efficient okay and comsets university wants to use it but it cannot do why because the comsets university cannot build their own routers the routers they are they are uh, uh, they are uh, built up by the they are built by uh, the cisco or the hp vendor okay so they are specialized people okay so but uh, and but the vendors they don't want to implement ospf2 so if the vendor like hp cisco they don't implement in the, uh, the ospf2 in their routers then the user cannot use ospf2 okay so it means that we are if uh, if we want to implement the new routing protocol so we rely on the vendors so if the vendor implement in their hardware then we can use it if they don't implement it then we cannot use it okay so it means that uh, if the protocol is not implemented in the routers then how it can be tested if it is implemented then it will be tested but the vendor they don't implement a new protocol any new protocol they implement a protocol after it is tested thoroughly after it it is matured okay so therefore it is it depends on vendors okay so similarly if suppose osp if the cisco uh, in the uh, in their router model one they have implemented ospf protocol okay the Kamsat University, they bought or uh, they have uh, bought the Cisco Model 1 routers. And the Cisco Model 1 router, it has OSPF 2. OSPF, suppose, protocol. And now suppose the Cisco, they, implement, they implemented OSPF 2 in their new routers, which is called Model 2. Cisco Router Model 2. So if the Comsat University wants to use OSPF version 2, then they have to buy the Cisco router model 2. And if they want to, uh, they buy them, then they have to uh, abandon or they have to replace the model 1 router by model 2. And this is costly because router is not, a, because the router, it is for example like uh, uh, 200,000 or 100,000. A thousand okay so just only osp protocol is changed all other features are same but you have to buy the new routers you have to buy the new router even if you want just single modification but still you have to buy the new routers okay so that's why 
many innovation they were untested why because the vendor they don't implement in their hardware the new protocol if they don't if the vendor like cisco hp they don't implement the new protocol in their uh, in their devices then the user cannot use it the user cannot use this so many innovation they they remain untested okay so the researcher proposed the new protocol then the researcher proposed rfc then it is depend on the vendor that whether the vendor implement the new protocol rfc in their upcoming devices or not so the innovation is very slow innovation is very slow why it is slow that the new protocol it doesn't come into market very early okay so these are also the limitation of uh, uh, per router architecture okay so we have discussed uh, the per router architecture limitations the first limitation was uh, in the distance vector router protocol that was called count to infinity problem or poison reverse problem a loop second we discuss the oscillation problem okay these are the, the technical problems and similarly we also discuss these limitations okay further we are going to now what hdn what does it do or uh, how how uh, hdn works and hdn okay what does it do that it basically separates the data plane it the hdn separates data plane and control plane the data plane is maintained at the routers and the control plane from all the routers it is separated and it is implemented in the remote controller and this controller is what it is for example a server it is a laptop okay so this remote controller or this centralized control plane it is computing the path the forwarding table for each and every routers okay and this remote controller or this control plane it is implemented in software it is implemented in software so if you want to change the control plane if you want to do modification so you have you can do it easily you can do it easily why because it is in software just install the new software okay and moreover it is open source the code is available okay so you can change the code okay by yourself okay so that's why it is in this sdn the control plane it is separated from the routers and it is implemented in a uh, server called remote controller and the control plane it is implemented in software and it is open source so the coding is freely available you can uh, one can see the coding and one can modify the coding okay so why a logical centralized control plane what does what are its advantages okay so some of the advantages we have discussed that if we have centralized control plane then this problem will be addressed first this in this sdn this problem will never arise this problem will never arise why because if there is a centralized control plane that can that computes the path for x y or x y z then this problem will never happen loop similarly if there is a centralized controller that computes the path for a b c then this oscillation problem will never occur similarly if the control plane is implemented in software then we can do modification if it is available open source so we, so we can check the coding and we can check the coding for error whether whether there is a error in the code or not okay and second thing that if the researchers suppose uh, propose a new approach so it can implement that approach in the control plane in software by itself okay so it doesn't have have to change the routers the same router it can be used okay no problem okay so so one can experimentally check the one can uh, if uh, if a researcher has proposed a new approach for example ospf version 2 so it can implement in the controller in software its co coding is available okay and the router it the uh, the researcher doesn't need to change the routers the 
they can use this dead routers okay so now the innovation all these problems are solved okay so further what are the advantages of software defined networking that is software defined networking using logically centralized control plane okay so it provide easier network management easier network management why because in the per router architecture in the per router architecture okay let's see it in the per router architecture the control plane is present in each and every router so if one wants to change or to configure the control plane so one has to configure or change the control plane of each and every router so if there are 10000 routers so one has to change the control plane configuration in 10000 routers so it is difficult to manage difficult to manage but in hdn it is much easy how it is easy because if one wants to change or one wants to change the configuration of control plane so it has to be changed only here at controller because the control plane is here at a single point and it will be implemented each and every way so you don't need to so if there are 10000 routers but you have to change only at a single point at the controller why because the control plane is present here centralized okay so the manageability is much much easy okay so it provides easier network management it avoids router misconfiguration why because i told you that in the per router architecture so the control plane is present in each and every routers so if there are 10000 routers and one wants to change the configuration of a control plane then one has to change the control plane of each and every router so it to take error it there is chance of error but in hdn we have to change the control plane configuration only at centralized point at single point so it, the chances of error are much much less and it provides greater flexibility of traffic flows we will discuss this point through an example in the uh, in the uh, upcoming slides okay second the o uh, the in nsdn we use table based forwarding and table based forwarding it has uh, uh, more generalized okay so uh, let me explain it through an example so if you know it uh, about for example this okay this was the pattern so you can use but in the per router architecture we have only destination ip based forwarding but here the we can use a uh, switch port we can use make source address make destination in this ethernet type we can use vlan id ip source ip destination ip pro, uh, protocol tcp uh, uh, source port tcp destination port etc so there are so it the open flow it allows and this open flow table flow table it has greater flexibility we can use any of these combination to define a flow to define an entry in the forwarding table because you can see here the forwarding entry is defined based on IP source and IP destination okay so the same source and same the same destination they have two different entries why because based on the IP source address okay so it provides much flexibility it provides much flexibility so we will discuss it in through an examples okay and this uh, the control plan basically it programs the data plane ba basically you can see that the control plane it basically built up this forwarding table okay so it means that the control plane the controller it basically control how this router should work okay so the programming of the hardware the uh, the the data plane these are just dump devices dump devices okay and these how they should work so they should work as per the con the direction as per the instruction of controller okay so this controller it is actually programming the data plane that how the data plane should work so it is basically programming program 
by the controller okay so we have a centralized programming okay only the controller has uh, uh, the centralized controller it has to decide that which uh, switch should sh sh forward the flow to which switch okay and it is easier because managing from single point of view it is much easy is if then in the in the per router architecture if there are 10000 routers so we have to do configuration in 10000 routers so it is much difficult so in the hdn the it, the controller computes the table centrally that is and then distribute it what does it mean okay you can see that in hdn the control plane is centralized in the remote controller so this control plane it computes the forwarding table the route for each router and then that uh, that forwarding table is is installed in the each router okay so <coughs> you can see that distributed programming it is more difficult so we have discussed that the the per router architecture it is distributed in nature it is the per router architecture it is distributed in nature okay what does it mean that in each router we have control plane so it is difficult to manage it is so if there are 10,000 routers so there in each router we have control plane each router we have routing algorithm so it is so manage managing 10,000 control planes it is much difficult as compared to managing a centralized control plane okay like for okay so this that's why it is uh, used second another very important and interesting thing that i have told you that it is implement the control plane is implemented in software okay the control plane it is implemented in software so you can if you want to change the control plane so you can just install the new software okay so you don't need to replace the routers okay but in the per router architecture i told you that this hard this control plane and data plane they are implemented in hardware so it you cannot change it okay in the per router architecture and the and the sdn the control plane is implemented in centralized controller and this is implemented in software and another important thing that the coding is freely open it's open so one can do modification even in the coding <laughs> even in the coding and one can also see the coding that whether there is an error in the coding or not but in the per router architecture i have told you that it is closed the implementation the coding of the uh, control plane here in the router it is not open so one cannot see its coding okay one cannot examine its coding for errors okay so this is another so the sdn it provides open source non proprietary implementation of control plane so one can note that it will reduce the cost of the networking as well okay the cost of networking as well okay so the uh, in the sdn the control pen is not only implemented in software but the control pen is also uh, open source available open source means that one can see the coding one can modify it or one can install its own application easily okay so it will reduce the cost as well the cost as well okay so that's why many uh, like cisco it was uh, for router it they proposed the uh, first they uh, had uh, open source open flow based in uh, uh, switches that were supporting the open source controller but now they have uh, their own controller which is called rna okay and that controller is proprietary okay so th therefore the vendors they are uh, somehow uh, uh, reluctant to adopt hdn okay so let me explain uh, again the advantage of SDN uh, through an analogy. So we are going to implement. Uh, so suppose that uh, we have specialized hardware. 
we have specialized operating system and we have specialized applications okay so if this is the architecture okay uh, but on other hand for example this this is the uh, computer which is used for space exploration application on another hand we can have another architecture here the microprocessor is built up and the microprocessor you can run window we can run linux or we can run mac operating system it depends on you but here you cannot run the window you can run only the specialized operating system you cannot run linux you cannot run mac okay so you can run only specialized operating system here the hardware is specialized here the hardware is general purpose you can run window this microprocessor it can support window linux mac etc and if you want to run here the hardware uh, the application then you have to use specialized application for example space exploration application but here you can use any application okay for example you can run matlab you can run skype you can run internet flana uh, uh, etc etc okay so this is somehow more general and this is how specialized so which one is better which one is better both are better specialized is better and general purpose is better okay how specialized is better because it is specialized so it will be efficient it will be faster it will be correct okay for example if there is an i i specialist medical doctor and there is a general medical doctor so if a person has the i problems so the i specialist could be better but this i specialist it can only see the patients which has the i problems but the general medical doctor it can it can uh, it, it can examine the people of various diseases okay so both are uh, so this will be uh, not if the a person has the eye uh, problem that is a severe problem or that is a rare problem then this general medical doctor will not be efficient but the eye specialist will be efficient but if there is a problem uh, if there are five people some have ent problem some have some medical problem etc etc uh, so this general medical doctor will be good okay to handle all these five people so similarly so this is the how it works okay so you can see that all the uh, these things the hardware the operating system and application they are vertically integrated okay and they are closed one cannot modify it and it has slow it has small industry why it is only because it is built up for the space exploration application so it is it can only be used this uh, and it can be only used in space exploration application but this it can be used for many peoples okay so here we have horizontal they are integrated you can see, see that you can use here window linux etc you can use multiple type of applications okay so open interfaces for this uh, microprocessor is implemented whether you want the window can also be run the linux can also be run and mac can also be run so it provides rapid innovation and it has huge industry like for example general medical doctor it can see the patient of various diseases but eye specialist it can only see the patient of or it can only examine the patient of eye, uh, that has eye problems okay so this is the SDN. This is the SDN, and this is the proprietary devices. Okay, the per router architecture. Now we are going to discuss some more limitation of per router architectures. Okay, so suppose we call this problem traffic engineering P one problem number one. Okay, traffic engineering. What does it mean? Traffic engineering is there that the traffic should be routed. based on some predefined criteria okay differently okay for example 
in the traffic engineering p1 problem what is the problem suppose the problem is that if the network operator wants that u to z traffic it should flow along u v w z path this path and x to z from x to z the traffic should move along x w z okay so it cannot be achieved why because you can see that from u to z this is the shortest path okay from x to z this is the shortest path this is the shortest path if you if this is the shortest path then the link state routing protocol or distance vector routing protocol it will give you this path from u to z and from x to z but you want to use this path so you cannot do it why because this is not the shortest path the link state cannot support it okay so this is very difficult to achieve in traditional routing in the per router architecture okay but in hdn it is much easy why because in hdn we can use for example if the traffic if the ip source is a u if the ip source is u and ip destination is z then the data should be moved to port number 2 and it is done by the controller so you can only do changes in the controller but in the per router architecture if you want to achieve it then you have to change the weights of many routers many routers so it is very difficult so if you want to achieve this that the uh, this if you want to achieve this problem if you want to if you want to address this question in the per router architecture and in the traditional routing so it is difficult why because we have to define link weights we have to define not the link weights not only on this path and this path but we have to define also other link weights such that these paths are computed and that is not easy okay but in the hdn we can only do modification in the centralized controller and it will be implemented like this flow table in the flow table but in the in the traditional routing or the per router architecture the control plane is present in each and every routers okay the control plane is not only present here but it is present in each and every routers so we have to change each and every routers and that is difficult okay so another problem what is the problem traffic engineering problem p2 it is difficult to achieve in the traditional routing what does it mean suppose if the network operator wants to split u to z traffic along u v z and u x y z for example the traffic comes here it is 10 mb okay it is 10 mb so this traffic it should be split it 5 mb traffic should be go should be forwarded on this path and 5 mb traffic should be forwarded on this path okay this cannot be done in the link state router protocol why in the link state routing protocol and in the per router architecture if you remember the we have flow table or forwarding table based on destination ip address you can see that here these are the this these are the nodes so for all these nodes this is the router destination router so the whether you are sending data to this host 22 uh, Uh, 223.1.1 or 223.1.1.2 or 223.1.1.4 so all for all these destination the data from here it will move on this path because we have destination based forwarding okay so for each destination we have only single path for each destination we have only single path okay so it this that for destination this one z1 we have only this single path okay so we cannot split this traffic that half traffic should move on this path and for half traffic should move on this path so we cannot achieve it we can achieve it but we, for this purpose we will use multi path routing algorithm and that is difficult and that will ex incur extra overhead okay but in hdn it is much easy okay it is much easy okay 
so similarly if you if you remember in the link state routing protocol that when in the first in the last step step five when this uh, register algorithm is executed so you can see from u to z this is the path so the path is stored based on destination based for destination there is only one path and th and the path is like for example this one okay so you can see that that for each destination there is only single path okay so this traffic splitting uh, that we discuss it cannot be it is difficult to achieve in the per router architecture in traditional routing but in hdn it is much easy okay why because in hdn we don't have only destination uh, the forwarding based on only destination ip address but but the forwarding is more generic the forwarding can be performed based on port switch port number vlan id make switch address make destination ip and so on and there are not only forwarding but there are different actions available like forward encapsulate drop send to normal processing pipeline modify etc so we have already discussed so the open flow data plane this is more generic okay so it can accommodate multiple so this this slide it is about the uh, this problem okay in hdn okay we can uh, in hdn we can address this problem how if we want to address it in the per router architecture then we have to change the control pane each each and every routers if there are 10000 routers so we have to change the control pane of 10000 routers but in hdn it is much easy how it is easy because the control pane is centralized because this decision will be will be decided by control pane so the control pane in the hdn is centralized so if it is centralized so we have to only change here in the hdn okay so this is much easy and second when uh, the hdn install the flows so the already the forwarding table uh, okay like for example uh, if we use like uh, this one in the per hour architecture if you want to achieve it so first we have to change the, uh, the control pane in each router and it is difficult and second the forwarding table that is available in the per router architecture it cannot support why because the per router architecture it can ho have the destination based forwarding for each destination there is only one path available okay so we don't have much flexibility here in the forwarding table of the per router architecture however in hdn we have uh, we have a more uh, general more general more flexible forwarding table okay that forwarding can be decided not only on ip destination address but ip source ip protocol tcp make and this field can also be used to define the uh, forwarding okay so for this problem particular problem uh, uh, for this particular problem if uh, to address an hdn okay the, so it, the first thing is that that if you want to imp to implement it okay so we have to do changes in the control plane and the in the hdn the changes for the control plane is it in single point in single point that is in the controller this is the first thing and second the data plane in the hdn it has the flexibility it has the flexibility it because the forwarding table in the hdn it is more generic the forwarding table in the hdn it is more generic so the hdn forwarding the switches can also support it okay so how it is addressed so this problem okay uh, this problem so it can be addressed in the hdn switches why this is the approach okay this is the approach so this is the solution of traffic engineering so these two tables this is the first is called meter table and another is flow table so if these two tables they are used so we can achieve it uh, in the uh, in the switches so the switches forwarding table they can support this uh, the problem of 
traffic engineering P2. So traffic engineering P2 problem can be solved in the HDM ECD. Okay. Third, we are going to discuss another problem of traffic engineering. Like for example, we call it P3. It is also difficult to achieve in the networking. What is this problem? Suppose you know that when this is the data, for example, the data is moving from X and U. Both U and X, they are sending data to Z. So the destination is same. And for, for example, the U is following this path. And X is following this path. So here at W, the destination is same, Z. So if the destination is same, then the, the then the traditional routing protocol and the traditional routing protocol for same destination for same destination we will have same path and per router architecture are in the traditional networking if the destination is same then we at a router we will have the same path single path for each single destination we have single path okay so in this case you can see that uh, here at W, the data is received from U and from X and both data they are destined for Z. So it will be forwarded on this path only, single path. But the, suppose the user at once that the W, that, that the traffic of X at W, it should be forwarded on this path and the traffic from U, it should be forwarded on this path. So a, what if W wants to route blue? and red traffic definitely red should be moved on this link and blue should be moved on this link so it is difficult to achieve why because in the per router architecture the are uh, in the link state and in the distance vector for each destination and each router we have single path we have single path we can't have multiple paths but in hdn it is much easy to achieve in hdn it is much easy to achieve okay so it is another problem and this problem can be achieved in SDN why because if you want to change so we have to only change the it centralized controller okay so it can be achieved and second the the forwarding table it in the SDN it is more flexible okay why you can see that the we can have the we can define a flow based on ip destination as well as ip source okay so it is much easy it can it is possible okay okay it is possible because the forwarding table in the hdn it can be specified based on ip destination as well as ip source okay so if you want to achieve this problem in hdn so in the w uh, router at the forwarding table in the forwarding table we can specify that if the destination is z and the source is u so the data should be moved on this link if the so if the destination is z and the source is x then the data can be moved on this link so the nsdn the forwarding table at the switches it provides this flexibility okay so the software defined network it is you can see that how it works so we have discussed the up to now the limitation of uh, of the uh, of the uh, per router arch architecture and how the SDN works. So we can see that first of all this the forwarding table and the SDN switches it is generalized. It is generalized. Generalized means that it is not only based on destination IP address, but there are more than this more uh, other fields can also be cons considered for flow. For example, you can see these fields can be considered more than these fields. Okay, so the so the SDN it has first advantage. The first advantage of SDN is that that the forwarding table in the SDN switches it is more generalized. It is not only based on IP destination, but IP source, IRTCP protocol, or UDP protocol, TCP port number, or UDP port number, source port number, destination port number, MAC addresses, etc. Okay. So this is the first advantage of SDN. The second advantage of SDN is that, that the data plane and control plane they are separated. The data plane is left in the 
switches and control plane is is implemented centralizedly in a remote server and this remote server is called controller okay and this con centralized control plane or centralized controller it computes the path for each and every routers okay so this is the another limitations so it means that if we want to change the control plane then we don't need to change the hardware we don't need to change the data plane we don't need to change the routers so the routers remain the same and we can change the control plane only at controller and there are two more additional advantages because this remote control plane it is implemented in software so we can just install the new software and moreover it is open source open available so the code even it is also available open source okay so so the, the control plane functionality it is external to data plane so we can change the control plane without changing the data plane when we can change the data plane without changing the control plane okay and fourth that this control plane that is implemented it is also it also provides the uh, somehow the abstraction abstraction what does it mean for example i would like to explain it through an example i think it will be much clearer clear to you if you understand it okay for example we have discussed in this uh, slide okay uh, you can see that we have hardware microprocessor and based on microprocessor we have operating system and based on operating system we can run many applications okay so similarly the controller it has hardware for example general purpose processor then it has the operating system so operating system is managing this hardware and based on a, 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 an operating system we have applications so the user just they just they they use this system through the applications okay so in the similar way in the sdn control plane it is implemented that for sdn control plane we have hardware okay we have hardware okay for sdn we have hardware okay for sdn control plane we have hardware and the based on hardware there is operating system and based on operating system we have different applications like routing access control load balancing etc okay so this is the overall of architecture of the sdn so you can see in sdn we have data plane in sdn we have control plane and sdn we have application plane this is the application plane so actually this hardware it is controlled by this controller and the working of this controller it can be configured or it can be controlled through these applications okay so the the application they control this hardware not directly they control it through remote controller and remote controller then control this hardware okay so this provides some kind of abstraction to the user to the programmer okay so we will discuss this in more detail through examples in the next video okay